OK, so this is number 10 on page 54. And on page 10 on page 54, what we have in this case, ladies and gentlemen, um, is they want us to prove that line AB is congruent to line AC. AB is congruent to line AC. So a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, when I see a triangle within another triangle, right? we're trying to prove that lines are you know, going to be, um, or line AB is congruent to line AC. AB is congruent to line AC. That's what they're asking, right? OK, so to do that, um, let's go and write down some of the things that we can figure out uh, to write. So what I'm going to do is let's do a, a statement or two comp proof. So let's write down what we have. We know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The reason why we know that is that's given. So those two angles are congruent to each other. OK? You all right? Okay. So we know that those two angles are congruent to each other. Uh, the next thing is we know that DE is parallel to BC. That's given. Now, whenever we see that two lines are parallel, we know to always look for angle what? Re I know, but I can't hear you all the way. Angle relationships. What type of relationships do we get when we have um, angles and a transversal, a line that intersects them? Alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding. Those are the angles that are equal in measure. And then we have consecutive interior, which add up to 180. So in here, I see that I have two parallel lines, but I, and I have two transversals. On these two transversals, do I have any lines that are alternating? No? Do you, well, here's, look at, here's the parallel lines, right? Remember, angle 2 and 3, those are on the same side of the transversal, right? 1 and 4 are on the same side of the transversal. So alternate interior don't work. Alternate exterior don't work. But what about corresponding? That will work, right? So now I can say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Because um, those are corresponding. Then we could also say. Angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent angles. Um, so you could say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Angle 1, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. OK. Now I figured this out. So now we could say that. So we know that these two are equal to each other, right? Now I know that 2 and 3 are equal to each other. And 1 and 4 are now equal to each other. Because these are corresponding angles. These are corresponding angles, correct? Now, what do we know when we have opposite, ang opposite angles? All right, let's go back to the theorem. When I know that I have an isosceles triangle, what does that tell me about the opposite angles? They're congruent, right? If I have opposite sides, then I now know that these two angles are congruent. So guess what? What happens if I give you a triangle and I say, hey, the opposite angles are equal? What do you think that tells you about the, tr the opposite sides? They're equal as well. It's an isosceles triangle. This is the converse isosceles triangle theorem. That states that if you have two angles that are opposite, then their sides, or you have two angles that are opposite that are equal in measure, their sides are now equal in measure. So now I can say that AB is congruent to AC because the converse <laughs> of 
Isosceles converse theorem. Yes? Can I finish the video? Oh, OK, thanks. All right, that's it. Um, let me pass out the work that you're going to do, give your directions, and then you can go and get some water.